The Wren Sport name sits right at the top of the 911 tree. It's a very, very, very special model lineage. It's approaching half a century old, of course. So what better time to assess the first and the latest 911 RS and see how that name has evolved over 50 years. this thing is to drive. Nearly 50 years after the 2.7 RS first graced our roads, it is certainly not a disappointment to drive today. Such a crucial car, isn't it, in the history of Porsche. It really was the culmination of everything the company had learned from the 911R project of 1967 in terms of maximum power and minimum weight applied to what was really, wasn't it, the end of the pre-impact body era. The 2.7 RS was conceived, as you know, in order to take the 911 racing for what would ultimately become its 2.8 RSR and 3 litre RSR bigger brothers. The 2.7 Carrera RS is based on the 2.4 S of 1972 and 1973, the F series cars, those having a 2.4 litre, 193 brake horsepower engine and they really were comparable to GT3s of today. It's a big step up from the 911T and E that was also in the 911 model lineup of the time. The 2.7 RS got its superior displacement thanks to a bigger bore at 90 millimeters. And that and a few other tweaks to that flat six out the back produced 210 horsepower. So around 17 more than the 2.4 S but also it had a much more aggressive torque profile as well. The 2.7 Carrera RS might be a world away from the GT3 RS, but as we're about to find out, they both adhere to the same Rennsport philosophy, starting here at its genesis. First thing is to do with aerodynamics, key ingredient of that Rennsport DNA. The 2.7 RS was the first production sports car to feature both the front chin spoiler in tandem with a rear wing. Incidentally as well, this Burtzel ducktail, that is the first wing fitted to a production sports car, full stop. So aerodynamics was improved over the 2.4S of which this is based on. Also again, key ingredient, weight saving. Thinner glass, thinner metal, lots of sound deadening stripped out from this car all over. Again, it helps in that power to weight ratio. Of course, it has more power as well. Also more grip, mechanical grip, seven inch Fuchs wheels on the rear rather than six on the 2.4S. That's to fit wider tires, 215 on the back up from 185 on the 2.4S. And it's for that reason that we now have this iconic arch profile with the arches being flared in order to get those wider tires in. That is the start of the Rensport Genesis. And as we well know, the story evolves quite significantly over the 50 years since. Now comparing the 2.7 Carrera RS to the 991 Gen 2 GT3 RS ahead of me is absolutely pointless. It'd be a bit like comparing a Typhoon fighter jet to a hang glider. So what we are gonna do is look at the history of the RS badge 
and how it's evolved from this, a mechanically superior car over its contemporary rivals, to the GT3 RS, which really is a technical masterclass. Well, the car first went on display at the Paris Motor Show in 1972. The marketing department decided to fuse the name Carrera, which was already fairly synonymous with Porsche cars, particularly 356s of course, with the name Rennsport. The 2.7 Carrera RS was born, and it is incredible to think the marketing department wasn't confident it would sell the 500 units needed in order to homologate what would become the 2.8 RSR. Well, reception of the car defied the odds, certainly from the marketing department's point of view, because Porsche would go on to sell 1,590 2.7 RSs, split down, by the way, between 17 RSHs, RS homologation cars. They have a few crucial details that are different from later cars. They're very rare, very sought after. You then had 500 lightweights, those being the 900, 975 kilo cars I mentioned. Uh, what does that leave? 1,308 Tourings, which is uh, such as this, and then 55 RSRs. If my math is correct, it's probably not, that should total 1,590 Carrera RSs from 1973. So, what we all want to know is, how does this thing drive today? What is it like to drive the very first 911 Rennsport? Well, as I said at the top of the video, it's certainly no disappointment. It helps, I'm in mean, a really good example, by the way. Beautifully restored, this is exactly as a 2.7 RS should be and was. It's appropriate to give credit where it's due. This exquisite RS being recently restored with originality in mind by Neil Bainbridge at BS Motorsport before the car was acquired by its present custodian through Jonathan Franklin Cars, specialists in Porsches rare and prestigious. Now, whilst it's nowhere near as hardcore as, uh, as later even air-cooled Rennsports, such as the 993 RS, for example, um, the 2.7 RS, it does feel like a proper classic sports car. The gearbox all over throw is a lot longer than what we're used to today. It feels tight, it has a really positive throw, it really responds well to uh, firm inputs from the driver. The steering, so much feel through the wheel, it really is a bit of a wrestle at times to point the car in the right direction. But, and this is the beautiful thing about old school mechanical cars, is it just weights up so well plant the nose into the corner, the steering really weights up, really heavy, get on the accelerator, the weight goes backwards and the steering goes light and it really does help you manage whereabouts on the car the grip is. Just a classic hallmark of an old 911. The engine out the back, that 2.7, mechanical fuel injection, that's Bosch MFI, so responsive, it picks up so well, it's got so much more lower down torque than the 2.4S of the same model year. Sounds great, doesn't it? The whole, it sounds mechanical. That really is the buzzword, I think, for the 2.7 RS. The really impressive thing for me is how responsive this thing is. 210 horsepower by today's standards, so it's nothing really, is it? But this car also weighs nothing as well. And it does mean it's really responsive to a prod of that right foot. It's a sprightly sports car. Just happens to be nearly 50 years old. From here, the Rennsport story evolved significantly. Just one year later, the three litre RS arrived with more power, better brakes, and a revised chassis. Then the competition only SCRS continued the 911 success story on gravel. 20 years after the original, the Carrera RS returned to the road with the 964 before the arrival of the 993 Carrera RS, which is, for me, the ultimate expression of air-cooled 911. By the turn of the millennium though, Carrera RS made way for GT3 RS. And although the philosophy remained, it was the approach that differed.
road. Andreas Preuninger has said that the 991RS is 11,000 components working together as one. I can't think of a better description for the latest Ren Sport than that. So many parts, so many small but crucial technicalities that all add up to just the most outstanding and outrageous bigger picture that really is the benchmark for modern day performance in a super sports car. I mean, look around me, it's a totally different environment to that 2.7 RS. There's an automatic gearbox, there's paddles, there's a cage, we're in fixed buckets. I look outside, I've got a monstrous and adjustable wing looking at me. There's vents and gaps and grooves all over the car to manage airflow under, over and in and out through the car as well. And whilst that 2.7 RS is pretty much three pedals and a steering wheel, this is absolutely dripping in Porsche pseudonyms. PASM, PADM, PTV, PDK, then you've got stuff like rear axle steering as well. The bar is so high, isn't it, for super sports cars these days that we really are down to the finest margins that make the biggest difference. The amount of pitch and roll on that 2.7 RS ahead it's comical in comparison to this that just corners so flat. This is such a scalpel knife of a sports car. The GT3 RS delivers in every way imaginable. Just in reference to the Gen 1 991 RS, which a fantastic car, but where Porsche has improved on the Gen 2 is definitely in ride quality. Likewise as well, the steering. I mean, if ever there was an argument in favour of electrically assisted steering and which blows the counter argument of mechanically assisted steering out of the water. This is it. We talked about the chassis, the engine is such a special part of this car's DNA as well. It's the four litre naturally aspirated of course flat six in the GT3 RS. Uh, similar as that to found in the 991 Gen 2 GT3. Extra 20 horsepower has been unlocked in this to 520 horsepower. And to my mind, this really is the single best engine ever shoehorned into a car for the road, ever, full stop. It really is that good. It revs to 9K and it's got a shed load of character as well. Plenty of low down torque, and then at four and a half grand, it kicks you on again. And actually, it still is quite a peaky engine. The beauty of this is, when you get past 8K, that last thousand RPM between eight and 9K, there's not too much drop off. You've actually, at 9,000 RPM, got as much torque available as you have at four and a half, which is absurd. So, power is so accessible on this thing, but also it's that initial pickup and throttle response which is mind-blowingly quick. It is so immediate, it's just so difficult to pick fault with it. And it sounds outrageous as well, doesn't it? What a noise! So we compared the 2.7 RS to the 2.4 S, it's contemporary at the time. So we should look at this versus the Gen 2 991 GT3, which they have ostensibly the same engine, albeit with the tweaks, only 20 horsepower more here. But again, where the RS wins is down to those fine details. And really it comes to aerodynamics. And what that means in terms of that ever more crucial downforce is the 991 GT3 RS in Gen 2 form has very nearly double the maximum downforce at 200 kilometers an hour of that GT3. 144 kilos versus 75. How does this drive today? Well, actually, it's really easy to drive. Push on in this car though, and it's a different beast. The capabilities of this car are far above my own, and to be honest, probably far above most people that actually drive and own them. It's a cup car with license plates.
latest RS still pays true to that original 911 DNA of weight saving. With the amount of sound deadening that's been taken out of this, I love the fact that you can hear the brakes on this car. But again, it's not just about stripping weight. There are technical details to this car. For example, the glass in the rear quarter is glass. It's not Perspex. And it's actually the same glass as what you have on your modern day smartphone. And the reason is not only is it lightweight, it's also super durable. There is a slight weight saving for the GT3 RS over a PDK equivalent GT3. And just like the 2.7 RS over the 2.4 S, the GT3 RS also gets slightly bigger boots for more grip over its GT3 little brother. It's hilarious when you put these two cars next to each other because the wheels alone on the latest RS are bigger than the wheels and tires of the original and that's not even doing it justice as to the gulf between the first and the latest it may well be utterly unrecognizable from the 2.7 rs but the ideology of this car is exactly the same just everything turned up to well 11. if the 2.7 rs is described as a mechanical marvel this really is a technological triumph a masterpiece of the automotive genre. It's a sign of our times, isn't it? And an illustration of the evolution of science, which of course has had an effect on our sports cars and our approach to them. It's outstanding, isn't it? That nearly 50 years later, half a century after the original, Porsche's 911 Rennsport still feeds in to the ideology of that very first car. The 2.7 RS, the granddad of Rennsport, a car that is ultimately responsible for 30,000 race victories since more than any other sports car and long may that continue.